<laughs> hey everyone, happy Monday. Hope you have a great day, April the 20th. I feel like time is ripping by even faster during this COVID thing. Does it feel the same to you? Well, it's weird because March, I'm pretty sure, had 957 days. And April feels <laughs> like it's got about six. So it's it, it's kind of strange. And so, yeah, right now, time feels like it's ripping really quick. Um, so, you know, go figure. But I guess that's just the way it goes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. It just, I can't even believe it's the end of April. No, I know. And I have to, uh, well, I can because this is my week of splurging because in two days, I have my 25th anniversary. And then in nine days, my wife turns 50. So, oh, I know this week very well. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. 25 Thank you. years. That's awesome. I know. Do you have a bunch of special surprises for her? No. Well, it was kind of funny because initially what we were going to do was go to Italy. Uh, my wife's been in, went to Italy when she was about 18 and then uh, has been wanting to take me there since we've been together. So yeah, we'll go to Italy. Then my daughter decides that she's going to get married and we have to pay for it. So, or at least a good- congratulations. Yeah. So she's getting married in November. And so then we thought, well, maybe we'll take a cruise. And then we had to pay for flowers along with some other things. And then we had decided we were going to do a long weekend in Charleston, South Carolina, because that's where we had our original honeymoon. Uh, but then, of course, all the COVID stuff happened. So we would have been in Charleston this past weekend. What are you going to do? So I got a text from her last week that there, uh, we had reservations at Trattoria Dooley on Wednesday. So she'll be uh, okay. <laughs> So she's doing the surprises on this one. I'll take care of her birthday, though. Wow. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Well, and of course, you can't tell us your surprises or they won't be surprises anymore. No, but that's We'll right. catch in with you after and you can tell us about all the great, cool yeah. things that you did. Because, you well, know, we yeah. check love surprises. Yeah, well, surprises are cool. And I like doing surprises for, but we have uh, we sort of have an agreement that we're limiting our surprises because we are paying for this wedding. So that's okay. Uh, no, you like this. You know what the best surprise I ever did was? What? This would have been, uh, I was about our 18th, 19th anniversary. I actually hired the guy that wrote the song. Oh, you froze. Song we first danced for us and our friends. I froze? Yes. Yeah, again, you said I hired the guy. Yeah, I hired the guy that wrote the song that she and I first danced to. So he played a private concert for us and our friends. Oh my so that was my best surprise. Gosh, that's pretty cool. Oh, I got some skills. Yeah, that wasn't a bad one. Thank that's, you. No, that wasn't a bad one. That was a lot of fun. That's super awesome. I had planned, my husband just turned 50 last in March. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I had this big surprise birthday party. And then as it got closer and... I had to tell him, like, babe, I don't know. Like, I'm sorry to tell you this, but this big party I had planned for you, right. it's going to get canceled. He's like, I kind of know about it. I'm like, mm. so some of our friends accidentally let it out of the bag. And then it was supposed to be May 15th. But I don't think that's happening either. My surprise wasn't quite as cool as having the person who wrote it. But I do have some other surprises coming for all of you at the beginning of May. I just can't reveal what they are yet, but they are going to be really, well, the thing that I'm going to tell you about has never been done. So that is going to be pretty cool. And you're going to want to pay attention to that. It's pure Alaskan style. So there you go. It's coming. Um, all right, so our discussion today is principle 30. Those yep. of you who don't know, we're talking about Stevenson's 33 principles. And principle 30 is the interference. You can see it below. The interference, interference with the transmission of innate forces causes incoordination or dis-ease. So let's talk about in reference to COVID-19 and and obviously not the virus as much as just all that it has brought the transmission of innate forces causes incoordination. What are you seeing in your practice 
as being true for this principle? Interference. Well, if you talk about interference, um, I, you know, I, you know, I'm sensing people want to come to the office, but because of what they've heard, the interference that they've heard regarding uh, COVID, um, that they're choosing not to. And we talked, I think, last week or the late week before, or whenever that that yeah, we're definitely offering them grace. Um, it, it is interference because um, you know the brain controls the whole show eventually right? Directly or indirectly. And so in order to deal with COVID so that our innate forces get through without interference and our bodies are therefore at ease, we need a nervous system free of the interference of the subluxation. And so so as far as the office is concerned, I've definitely noticed uh, that, um, you know, that, that there is an interference. And so, you know, there's that interference of fear and, 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 by not living in fear doesn't mean that you're living reckless by any stretch. You can certainly give it a pretty educated run about things. Um, so yeah, you know, practice numbers are down probably like most everybody, but that being said, you know, what I'm noticing lately is people are coming through and probably one of the things I've worked really hard since, you know, since this all started, uh, once I got my classes ready at Sherman, I was spending some time on my office. And so um, I've been doing a lot of Facebook marketing, really, and some email marketing as to clearing up that interference a bit in order to have, you know, an innate force between me and my practice members. You know, that's when we're on the same page, you know, as far as that's concerned. And right now we're not a little bit. And as we've said, we offer them grace because of it. Um, but this is a really good time not to beat them up for not coming in, but this is a good time to tell the chiropractic story. So, uh, you know, do a quick live, kind of like we're doing, just a quick five minutes. Hey, did you know about this? And this is how it relates to you. And shoot it out there. And just uh, being there and being present in a time of crisis, I think will lessen a lot of the interference between us and our practice members, because I'm, I'm seeing, you know, I'm getting new ones coming in, the new ones are closing. And then I'm the ones, the reactivations are coming in. So uh, already been a good week. And so, um, you know, the, you know, dis-ease is not necessarily symptomatic. It's just things aren't working like they should. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if we have it with our practice members, the easy thing there is, do you want to get them when things are, quote unquote, only at dis-ease? Or do you want to wait when things are full-blown symptomatic, when it's actually harder to take care of them? because that dis-ease will have been in their body for quite some time, sometimes even years. And that's why it's hugely important to, uh, as one of my mentors, Dr. Bill Deccan says, to check the babies. We want to be checking kids, um, you know, especially during a time like this. I mean, you have the virus that's floating around, and but then what about the uh, physical, well, the, the um, emotional changes that have gone on for the kids that, now are used to being with their friends and now they're stuck at home with their parents doing their schoolwork. Um, you know, their eating habits are different because they're used to whatever they ate at school and now they're eating God knows what, uh, eating all our quarantine snacks. And, um, you know, so all of that stuff would end up causing dis-ease if the innate forces are not flowing freely. You know, you bring up a couple of really, I think, important points of, the interference between ourselves and our practice members, the interference between ourselves and our and our community. And, and I think it really ties into the first part you said about fear, about people wondering, like, why aren't you more afraid? Um, and it's because the transmission of messages that we have gotten for years and years as chiropractors say something totally different than what we're being fed by modern media, right? And the media basically says, be afraid of everything out there. Instead, we're going, wait a minute. I've been working on this for a long time to make it strong so that I don't have to live in fear. But if there hasn't been that repetition of message from your body is strong, innate intelligence knows what to do, like take care of your body, take care of your spine, take care of your nervous system, it will take care of you. And, and I just think, in my fantasy world, can you imagine, and I think you and I have talked about this before, 
if there's such a bombardment of the chiropractic message, because every chiropractor told the story at least once a week in some fashion, whether it's on Instagram or it's on Facebook and it's written or it's a Facebook live, like just like bam, 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 like the message that we're getting from the media to be afraid of what's out there, like pretty soon our message could really sink in. And it's not just chiropractors right. telling that message. Sadly, others have, like, not sadly, but others have picked up that torch and are carrying it um, and have d- done a great job doing so. And I just I want to encourage chiropractors who are joining us now or watch this later, please don't think you're sharing too much. Please don't think that you're telling the story mm-hmm. too often because you have to remember, like, individual only buy what they've been told because they've been told it so many times. It's right. not necessarily that they agree with it. It's just, it's what they've heard over and over and over and over again. And so I truly don't believe that we can go overboard with the number of times that we're sharing the chiropractic message, reminding people like your body was designed to be well. It was designed right. to be well and there's interference that happens from these sources, but let me tell you something, when the interferences come, regular chiropractic adjustments move the needle back to your body being well. You were gonna say something, go ahead. No, well, as, as you're talking about that, you know, I, I think about the titration experiment we did in high school where you had the pipette, and you know, you, you know, you have the drip, 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 eventually it turns blue. And of course the experiment was how many drips? And then, of course, the philosophical question is which drip was the most important? And a lot of people say it was the last one uh, because it's the one that made it turn blue. But it's every one of those drips um, caused the solution to turn blue. And so um, I, I, I cannot agree with you more that we can't tell the story enough. And the reason is what story are our community members hearing outside of our offices. That story gets told, uh, we, we can't catch up to tell it uh, as much as they do, uh, but we got to try. And so now I, w- I will say, you know, what I see a lot on chiropractic pages is what chiropractic isn't. And, I, I w- and, and that's a dis-ease between us and our patients. And so instead of talking about what chiropractic isn't, let's lift up what it is. And that's why having this opportunity um, to have these chats is hugely important. And not because I'm speaking, but because you're willing to have a conversation and put it out there. I mean, I'm just a guy, you know, I'm just a guy. And so anybody can have these conversations with these principals and say, um, you know, hey, what about these? And, and as we've said many times before, if, if you feel at all confused or uncomfortable um, with the principal or any piece of whatever the chiropractic story is, um, I'm glad to give you my opinion on it and why I feel a certain way. And, you know, what, the thing I've been learning lately, I can't change anybody's mind. What I can do is present information and say, this is what this information has done for me. And then the person that hears it's going to choose to do what they will or what they won't with it. Um, so having conversations like these, why can't you do a Facebook Live on your page just ch- chatting about health? And, and uh, you know, one of the big things now that people are doing is having community rooms. And so put everybody in a community room where this is what we're going to talk about is topics that are important to this community, one of which is certainly going to be um, health. Now, is it um, emotionally polarizing at times now? Yeah. But, you know, so what? And so... Um, you know, as long as you don't come from an accusatory and more of an informational uh, standpoint, you know, somebody's not going to like what we have to say, and that's okay. Uh, my kids don't like what I have to say half the time. So um, it's just something we got to get used to. But your spouse? No, she agrees with everything I say. And the reason uh, she does is because I say everything, <laughs> I say everything she wants me to say. So that's why it works out really, really well. That's why we've been oh, married almost 25 years. Yeah, I know how to work this angle. So, yeah, she's always right. It's, it's way easier that way. And so, I mean, she'd have to be right. She married me, easier. right? Yeah, it's just easier. No, so, the uh, yeah, yeah, spouses have never had interference that's caused dis-ease before. That never happens. 
But, you know, now now it is such mm-hmm. a wonderful time. And we talk often about being, you know, you know, you're the most trusted advisor, if you will, to borrow a book yourself solid concept. And how you get to be the most trusted advisor is you, you give people hope. And and there's nothing on the planet as far as healthcare is concerned more hopeful than the chiropractic story. But the story needs to be told and lifted up for what we are and what chiropractic is and not what it isn't. And for those of you who who haven't joined us before and you're wondering, what are you talking about? What it isn't? It's it Brian's talking about how we'd like to non chiropractic. It's not about back pain. It's not about this. It's not about that. Like Okay. Like, you know, I think about it. Would you ever enter, introduce something else in your life about all the things that it isn't like, here's my new car. Right. It's, you know what, it, it's, it's not really fast and it's not, you know, it doesn't have this and it doesn't have that. Well, that like no one would ever do that. So why no. do we describe chiropractic for what it isn't? Let's, let's talk about all the things that it is for sure. And what other, what other profession has 33 principles Right. that govern how we look at it. Like it's it's so cool. If you're someone who hasn't studied the 33 principles and understood them, please go back and watch. I, I couldn't even tell you how many of these that we've mm-hmm. done over the last two years, like a ton of them. And they're really fun conversations. And well, of course they're fun. Um, yeah, well. duh. <laughs> Um, um, you know, and, and I want to share with all of you a way to appeal to people's intellect is to give them a process by which they can evaluate information. A way to appeal to an individual's intellect is to give them a process to evaluate the information that you're sharing with them. So if you're wanting them to better understand subluxation, nerve interference, um, nerve flow, you got to appeal to their intellect in a framework that they can go X, Y, and Z. And, and that's what I think the 33 principles does. Like it gives them a framework by which to evaluate the information that they understand about their health and well being. And, and I was thinking about the community groups. Um, you know, one thing I would encourage all of you to do when you lead a group like that, remember to listen more than you speak, mm-hmm. listen harder than what you speak. And so, go in there almost like less prepared with content and instead with questions because anyone who comes to the to that community room feels better about it if they're the ones that are doing the talking they're really not coming to something like that just because they want to hear you wax poetic like instead like make a statement and throw out a question and then make a statement and throw out a question don't just keep like blah 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 peppering right. them with information because i promise you it'll be difficult to have them come back the next time. So Brian, as we wrap this up, go ahead. Were you going to say something about that? Well, yeah. And and to that point, that's a, you make a a brilliant point there because hearing your community speak, now you know what's on their mind. And now you can create your messaging with the chiropractic story through that lens. So it really sinks in deeper and quicker. So we aren't just banging our heads. Um, You know, uh, as far as that's concerned. So you make a huge point here, you know, those community rooms, you know, we are to be the facilitators um, to get people to talk. And because we're, everybody wants to be heard. And I know I'm probably as bad about this as anybody. And you can ask my wife about that one, (laughs) but everybody just wants to feel heard, especially Mm -hmm. in the time of a crisis because there's anxiety and they don't know. And so they have questions. And a lot of times their statements are questions. Um, so yeah, to your point, just open up a conversation and get people talking when you can be the one that gets the neighborhood talking, even though you spoke, let's say 10% of the conversation, because you brought everybody together, you're the most trusted advisor, even though you didn't speak, you know, another way to do it is you can do kind of do interviews like Dr. Barb and I are doing with people in your community and same thing get the conversation rolling, let them do all the talking. And so while they're all the experts, then you have all sorts of different people, you're seen as the most trusted advisor because you're bringing in the people um, that will fit fit the mindset of of what your community is in right now. And remember as as a coach, you're in, and we're all like, 
I feel like health coaches for our practice members, right? Like, like you said, a trusted advisor. So your job then is to enroll individuals, not enroll them into a program member. You want to enroll them into the process, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're enrolling them into the process of seeing things from a new perspective by giving them a new lens, by figuring out the context by which they're speaking in this, this community room and what are they wanting to share? Because what they're wanting to share is also going to reveal who they are and even the questions that they have. And, and remember that if somebody does come up and, and Brian had mentioned in there, you know, like maybe you're going to have a hater or maybe you're going to have somebody who comes in just to rain on your parade. Please recognize that all that's happening is they're getting triggered. Mm -hmm. It's not you like, Sorry to say it, but we're, you're not probably really that important in a stranger's life. You're just not. Right. And so instead, what's happening is they're getting triggered. And then that's creating a physiological change in their body, leading to a thought, an action, and a consequence. And so if you can, try and and hear not what they're saying, but what are they feeling underneath? Oh, I went to a chiropractor and it was a terrible right. experience. Oh, my gosh. Like, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. What What made it terrible? And given right. that it was a terrible experience, why are you like, I'm really proud of you that you still showed up to this, this community event today that was hosted mm -hmm. by a chiropractor, me. So right. like, try and make them feel relevant because they're only showing up because they're trying to make it right. They're trying to figure out how can I still be a chiropractic practice member if my experience back then was so horrible. And right. really, truly, that's what they're, that a skeptic is somebody who's very passionate. They just don't want to be burned again. Yeah, and uh, totally. And and you know, one of the things that I I've been thinking about is is the cycle of acceptance. And there's a lot of different ways to look at it. And if you Google it, um, you'll find it. And so, at, at some point, you know, there, your your patients will hear something. And quite honestly, with what we have to deliver, that's going to be as I'm looking at I'm looking at on my screen shock, belief, dis disorientation. Well, I've never heard that before. And so well, that can't be true, right? So there's the denial in there. Now then there's fear, anger, anxiety comes in. And the reason is, all right, I'm hearing this, but I'm holding on to this other thing. And then, you know, the thought comes across their mind. I've been lied to my entire life and nobody likes to be lied to. Yeah. Um, so then you're kind of bummed out a little bit. Then you're like, well, I got to do something about it. And now you're going to accept it and, and move on. And then there's the new way. And yeah. so it, it probably one of the hugest uh, mistakes I made, and I love talking about chiropractic. Uh, but then what I realized was I was talking about it for myself. Um, I wasn't talking about it through them. And, and as you so eloquently said, I didn't make it a process of discovery. So instead of drip, 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 I dumped the whole solution of one into the other. And, right. uh, you know, and that might cause an explosion. And so it's um, finding out, you know, we, we say all the time, we got to meet the patient where they are. And where they are isn't where they are symptomatically, it's where they are mentally. And, yeah. you know, I mean, who knows, you know, you could have, so the people that have had bad experiences with the chiropractor, maybe they got adjusted the day that their mother died. You know, right. and, and then they just associate that. We right. don't know what that track record is, which is why we have to have a thick enough skin. Okay, because they're going to beat us up for some reason. We didn't do it to them, um, but something happened under the umbrella, at least their umbrella of chiropractic. And that's where we show some grace and find out what it is. Yeah. Um, you know, that's why we ask, have you been to the chiropractor before? Um what did you like? What didn't you like? Not from a way to, to bash the other chiropractor. That's no good. Um, you find out where somebody is. And then a lot of times you find out that they're not actually mad with chiropractic. They're mad or have anger or anxiety about something around it, if that makes sense. And so, yeah. all right. So is this really the problem? Well, yeah, that's really the problem. Okay, great. It's not actually chiropractic. That's the issue. Um, it, it'll be something else. And, and so that's where we can set our patients or our community members at ease. Um, because all what principle 30 is talking about is that when innate forces are disrupted, that's when there's incoordination and dis-ease. When our connection is disrupted with our communities, 
that's when there is this ease. And the way we bring ease is to bring more connection. And, and again, to your point, right, we don't talk a lot. We're the, we're the, uh, the hub of the wheel. We've got all these spokes going out um, that's uniting everybody because it's all part of the same wheel. And, you know, I, I just encourage everyone, if I can, I'm going to do an upgrade on the have thick skin. And, and I honestly, I think it's kind of just the opposite. Like, instead of having thick skin, skin and making it about us, it's not about us. Like, it's about our practice member. They're coming into their office because of their own personal reasons. And those personal reasons may be totally something you didn't anticipate. And so... I just encourage everyone to remember it's really not about you. Somebody else's experience, what they had before they met you, is it's it's not about you. They got triggered in some way, right? And so now they're coming back in hopes of, or they're they're coming to a chiropractor for the first time or again because they want to get something solved in their life. And it's about their experience, not ours. Now, does that mean that the you know the inmates run the asylum? That's not what I said at all. All I said was in interactions, whether with your practice members or with a family member or a neighbor, like lead with grace and re recognize like we're all just kind of going through this experiment called life um, and, and trying to figure it out every step of the way. And so we can all be more gracious. That's one. You know, I think there are lots of miracles that have come out of or lots of greatness that have come out of COVID. I said to my husband this week, and I'm like, listen. They tell you you have to come to the office. I don't want to know. I just want you to get up that morning and say, hey, babe, I'm going back to the office because I love having him home. And mm -hmm. so like to me, like that's been one of the benefits is having my husband home a lot more. And another huge benefit is I think people are being more gracious with one another and trying to be understanding and kind and thoughtful and recognize it's not just about me. Like we're all part of this, this together. And, and hopefully that we're going to see that continue on for a good while. Um, I, I wanna make a comment to all of you. So I'm gonna add this to the list, but I created a COVID-19 um, whiteboard topic list mm. to make it easier for all of you to have conversations in your in your offices about um, chiropractic and health and just creating that relationship. And I'll have to, I'll have to add the word titration. I love that. Um, so I'll make sure I give you credit Dr. Brian Dooley for that one. Um, I'll make sure that the post that that PDF gets posted below. And I'm not sure actually if Beautiful. I can post a PDF on Facebook. If, if not, I'll give you a free link and you can just grab it. Um, but I hope all of you will consider using them. If you go over them and you don't know how you would have a conversation, will you do me a favor and post in this thread like, hey, how would you guys handle this one? And Brian and I next week will go through and and go through as many of those as we can as our gift back to all of you to keep the titration going, to keep adding in the message, you know, encapsulated with love, the message encapsulated with love. Um, and like we've said before, you can do Facebook lives mm -hmm. as your whiteboard topics and do them in your office. So Brian, a very happy anniversary to you. Thank Give you. Don a big hug for me for her, her big birthday and congratulations on your daughter's upcoming wedding. That's exciting. Yeah, we got a lot going on here. <laughs> yeah, a lot on top of everything else. No kidding. So thanks That's for joining a... me today. I appreciate it. And to all of you, if you feel that this is a ben benefit to you, would you please just do a little tiny thing, and that is hit share and allow others to learn about chiropractic, which is going to likely lead them to your practice. So any final words, Brian, that you want to share? Um, no, um, other than, you know, it, it's our job. Um chiropractically and mentally to get rid of the dis-ease and the incoordination uh, in our community. Um, they may never become our patient and that's okay. Um, but, but it's our job to get that stuff out there and just, just keep at it. And, and, you know, practice your whiteboard topics while you're, you know, if you know what you're going to use for the next day, because yeah, you might say it 50 times in a day, but those patients only hear it once and that's who it's about. And so just if I know that I'm going to talk about titration to, uh, tomorrow morning, then from my office, uh, you know, from my house to the office, I should be practicing that titration talk. And, and yeah, you know what? Speak in front of a mirror. It's OK. Um, it takes practice. It just does. And, and nothing wrong with that. You know, I, I heard of a, 
I watched one of those crime shows years ago and, and an attorney was all concerned because he would train policemen how to testify. And there was one of the policemen that he trained was, was being accused of murder or something. And he's like, this guy knows all the tricks. And so what he did was he, he did his closing arguments and everything in his questioning to his barbecue grill. And it sounds goofy, but it, 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 when we put that kind of work into it, what comes out is so natural and free flowing. Um, that's when we set the patient at ease because when we haven't practiced our things, that's the anxiety that the patient senses. It's not theirs, but it's ours because we don't quite own the concept yet. And so just take some time and, and work on them. And to Dr. Barb's uh, point, you know, practice in here. How would you say this or whatever? That's okay. We all got to practice. That's why we call it a practice. And I'll tell you, you know that you're great at whiteboard topics when the other person is doing the majority of the talking. And, and, and understand that whiteboard topics is how you rehearse with your practice members to refer in your, to your office. Like no one wants to open their mouth and insult their raw intelligence. So if, if I started going to the chiropractor, even if I love going and I'm like, oh, you guys should go see my chiropractor. And they're like, well, why are you going to the chiropractor? And I don't really know, like, how do I handle that? I may, number one, not open my mouth to them ever again, or they may put enough doubt that I'm not coming back, even though it's something that I really love to do. So, so even ask that question, you know, like the, the word objection, like what's the number one objection that you hear from others that prevents them from following in your healthy footsteps? Oh, they say it's too expensive. Recognize that that's their objection too. They're just not voicing it to you. And so going through it will help them also just kind of like level down on that objection. So, all right. We kept going. All yep. of you, thank you so much. We'll see you again next Monday. Bye. Bye.